Are you tired of your friends, neighbors, family, friends, family, and whatever scanning your Wi-Fi password using the QR code method? You give it one person, then later in the day you have 200 devices connected. You're not a bad person, but this makes your internet slower and slower, so you have to change your password. But just face it, changing your password this and every time it's not ideal. You don't even have the time, sometimes you forget, you have to connect all your devices again. So, what if I told you there is a way? Put that to an end. Enter. Microtik. I'm using a, a very cheap Microtik version of HAP, right? And using this, we're going to stop everybody from scanning the outside password. If you, if someone if shares the password with the other person, then that person gets disconnected. Then the other person is connected. So if you're going to sacrifice your Wi-Fi for the other person, that's good. So. <clears throat> Let's get into it. I'm sure by now you know you can easily share Wi-Fi wi password using the QR code scanning method. You just connect, you need to connect to one phone, then you share it to another one. So if you experience such a problem where you don't want everybody sharing a Wi-Fi password and you can't do anything about it, then today that's an end. Welcome and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is David and let's get into it. So. This feature, I scan QR codes, started way back from 110. Now we are going to 114 or something. Start, starting from 110, going forward, you can easily go to your Wi-Fi settings. If you're connected to a network already, then you can get a QR code. Some phones do show you the password down there, but others don't. But you already know that you can easily get the QR the password Example, you have a laptop, then the laptop cannot use, you cannot scan the Wi-Fi password using the laptop. So you need to know the exact password. You can, there is a very simple workaround that where you can screenshot the QR code, go to Google Lens or any QR code scanner, then they decrypt the QR code into a, a readable password. So that means you are not secure in any way. So back all up and let's do this. So what are the requirements as to show? We can easily do this, this to protect your Wi-Fi password, but there is a catch. You need a microtip router. This one. I have done my research on a router using a camera. I stand up, but they don't have that feature. So you need a microtip router, but not all microtips. I will put a list somewhere here of what is supported routers with the hotspot feature. Then you need a device to configure to connect to the Wi-Fi, so the Wi-Fi router, a router, so that you can configure it. So, you need a device, either your laptop or your phone to configure the router, then the router itself, and the network. That's all you need. If you're the lucky few who has a Microtik router lying around, or you just decided to buy one for this, let me tell you, Microtik router, router, whatever you want to call it, has a lot of settings I have never seen in any other router. Guess it's meant for networking geeks. Geek for geeks. It those people who really love networking. You can there's a list of very many settings you can go around. You can set up SMS servers, mail servers, site hosting, file hosting, a lot of stuff. Now what method they are going to use today does this. Creates a unique credentials for you for each and every person. Is that what you are going to do? We're going to set up a wireless network which has no password. Then if anyone connects to that password, to that Wi-Fi, sorry. A pop-up displays, sign into network. I guess you have seen those. The one with the watchers, if you're in Kenya, you have Mawingo. Or when you're using a mobile network, when you run out of data, the subscription plan, then a message pops up saying, sign into this network. Then if you click that message, if you click the, the small notification, it takes you to a login page where you can create a login page where you can the user will create a, a username and a password. But in our case, we don't want any user to create his or our own password and username. So we want us to be the one who is who to create the database where the router will be checking if you have you are or you already exist in the database. So you want you be the only person allowed to add any user. But if you can do this in an advanced way where you can create a, a subscription a subscription plan, 
pero de ellos acá a mamá un tuyo sin amnesti que push me vi de de empezar ve if you're in Kenya we are the user pays some amount then the router the system will reconnect you will connect you to the network using the can set to your your address i it's 100 kenya shillings equals to two days then the router can collect the data for the duration allowed according to the amount specified in the router stack in your code and to make it you're not to be good to set that but if you're interested tell me down below the comments and i'll do a video where you can add and pass payments to your wi-fi router so that someone can pay you now in this case we only going to set up that if one scans if i'm connected then someone scans my qr code on my phone it disconnects me and then connects the other person because they cannot be two instances at the same time because the credentials are the same the root always in this place there's no more sessions allowed for this user can allow more sessions in the settings so without further ado let's jump into it so what you need to do open the device of choice that you decided to use to configure the network i'm using a laptop so first you need to connect to your router either wirelessly or using a an ethernet cable in my case i'm connected to my wi-fi using in the wireless method this stream tech I'm connected wirelessly. So this means I can access the admin administrator page using the web browser. Here is what to do. Open your browser of choice. I use Google Chrome and type the following IP address. If you are using a typical micro tick router, the default IP address is always 192.168.1.1.1. But feel free to check your router the back of the router on the box on the configuration to get your to know your IP address and this this takes you to a default page saying a router OS this is my default this is the default mic operating system installed on the micro tick routers but we have many others but in my case this is the the one if it fits new it will have no password or the password is blank the username the login username is admin the password is blank right I have already configured mine so it has a password man I'll input the password then log in so first thing you see this router has a lot of things to configure let's go to quick set with the web, web speak if you are if you have some time where you want to to learn more about microtik or to really configure your microtik you can download a, a software called winbox it is specially fit by microtik for configuration in on windows or on linux so that you can do any configuration i already have winbox but today you are going to use the web version of, of webfig and get your winbox there the tier small it allows you to connect in ways in example where you have bricked your router and you have no way to connect it to it because it has no wireless capabilities you can use ethernet and winbox to connect to it using the mac address so that's for another day so today, uh, you can see all the Ethernet ports. This router is powerful that enough you can configure each and every individual port on the router. You can create very many virtual virtual LANs, virtual ports. You can even use LTE. If you have seen LTE, LTE is our monitors out of five. So let's get into what we are going to do today. Now, configuring your hotspot. If you, you have to go to the web thing, just the IP tab. Now click the IP tab, then hotspot. If you really want to set up the hotspot on only one port, assuming now I'm connected to, I have an access point connected to one of the Ethernet ports, physical Ethernet port on the router. And I want only that access point to have the hotspot method. The hotspot, and uh, to have the hotspot configured on it, I can choose here. But now today I want to the whole router to be to have the hotspot feature. So I'll choose bridge. Bridge is where the, my ISP is feeding me the, the, the connection using the bridge. So the, my all of the connection will have the, the hotspot. So I select bridge and press next and click next. Local IP address I'll leave it as it is. Then next, the pool of, I, of IP addresses. I'll click next. As I said, certificate, just click next. SSL certificate is a, uh, it is important when you have to configure some stuff like websites. If you are hosting a server using the router, but it's not important now. You have to skip that.
think they have a problem. Select none. I guess you can't skip. Uh, IP address of the SM, SM TP server, skip that. DNS, skip. DNS name, skip. Now, here is what you have to creating a local hotspot yourself. This will be you, the one that you can log in to configure the, the hotspot, like adding new users, removing users, all those stuff. So I leave the password blank for now, that uh, it may be if I forget later. But that is a danger, so I have to set a password. All right, let me set a first time when EM. If I will get that password, I'll make a motion. Well, it did log me out. So I have to log in again. You see, I have been redirected to the MicroTik Internet Hotspot Service. Everybody in the, on the network, if connect here, will remain. A pop up will, will appear saying signing to the network. So the every user will require a username. Mine was admin and the password. Yes, so it's the same. And then connect. You can see my name is admin and I'm connected. So everybody else, if the, I, I have the user here, let's say, let me go back to now the importance of the win, win box. I can't connect the web version of the web Twitter in this mod. So I need to use win box. By doing that, you need to add a new yourself. Every time. That's why it's pointed to have winning box around. Yeah, it, it directs to after a successful connection, it directs you to our websites of choice. It can be Google, it can be your own website. So yeah, very many settings. But only doing that simple setting we just did. Make sure no one scans your Wi-Fi. If one connects because the their name and their password is not available on the database or on the router. The user will not be able to connect. So let me show you how you can add a new user. Once I'm connected, I can now connect to the router. To add a new user, I go to IP. And go to hotspot. I already have hotspot, then new user. Then you can add the username, maybe girlfriend. Yes, girlfriend. The password for girlfriend is maybe. Uh, you can also add limits like how do you want this? How for how long do you want this user connected? Maybe two hours. And set up time. How many megabytes? I guess this is what the service providers use. This is what the service providers use to to monitor how much data you have used. Maybe example if you're using Safaricom, then you buy twenty MBs valid for one hour. So they will come here and say. One hour, 60, this is six minutes. And bytes, how many, 20 bytes do multiply by, a, how many bytes make one megabyte? You do the math, maybe 20,000. Do the that, bytes in that download, then upload another 20,000. And the total, 40,000. Then, your plan. So this means this my girlfriend has only 20 and this, which will expire in exactly one hour. After one hour of using, then the validity of the data will, the, the connection will be over. So friends, that's how you avoid people from scamming your iPad password. As always, <clears throat> if you enjoyed this content, please consider giving, giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to enable us to do such nice videos. If you have any questions, if you did, did not understand anything, feel free to contact us or me on the comments and I'll see you in the next one.